our next step in deriving the spectroscopic term symbols for the P2 situation is to tabulate the big M sub S and big M sub L values that we obtained for the microstates. Whenever we have a microstate with a particular combination of M sub S and M sub L, for example, here we have M sub S equals zero and M sub L minus two, we put one tick mark in that box. So once we've completed our table, we'll have one tick mark for each microstate. So it is important to verify that there are exactly as many tick marks in the box as there are microstates in our situation. And if we go through and double check, we'll see that we have 15 tick marks corresponding to the 15 microstates. You will also notice that when you've completed the table uh, accurately, there's a certain symmetry to the table, which become more obvious as you go through more examples. We are now ready to derive our first symbol. What we want to look for is a rectangular region in the table that has one, um, at least one tick mark in each and every box. So if we notice sort of an imaginary rectangle going from minus one through zero to plus one along the M sub L axis and bounded from one, zero, minus one on the M sub S axis. So we have this box going right around there. We notice within this rectangular region, each of the boxes has at least one pink tick mark. Now, I've color coded the tick marks for reasons which will become clear later on, but now we just want to uh, concentrate on the pink tick marks and we see that there are nine such tick marks in a three by three rectangle. So here is how we proceed. We notice that in this particular case, that the big M sub L values vary from minus one to plus one. So let's just write that down here. Big M sub L equals minus one is zero to plus one. Now we're quite used to going from L to M sub L when we're working with atomic symbols. So we have to get a little bit of practice in going in the reverse direction. But we recall that if we had small M sub L, if we had a small L value equal to one, then the possible small M sub L values would go from minus one to zero to plus one. With capital L, it works exactly the same way. So we notice that this combination of M sub L values is only possible for a big L value of L equals one. Because as we recall, the M sub L values go from minus L to plus L. So now that we have a big L value of minus one, we notice that in situations where we have small L is equal to one, this corresponds to a P orbital with a small P. Following by analogy, in cases where big L is equal to one, we represent that with a capital P value. So that is our angular momentum term. Similarly, we look at the M sub S values and we notice the M sub S values likewise go from minus one to zero to plus one. So for exactly the same reasoning, we notice that this corresponds to a situation where big S is equal to one. Now remember, L corresponds to the angular momentum, the orbital angular momentum, and S corresponds to the spin angular momentum. So when we're working out our term symbols, we generally don't work with S directly. We're actually interested in an expression that has the value uh, we call the multiplicity. And the multiplicity is calculated as 2s plus 1. So in our particular case here, we notice that the big S value is equal to 1. If we insert it into our equation, 2s plus 1, we get a spin multiplicity of 3. When we have such a situation, we call this a triplet state. So if you write out the term symbol for this particular combination of microstates, 
we will write it down as 3 in the upper left hand corner as a superscript P, which we would read as a triplet P state. Once we've derived that particular symbol, we no longer need to consider the microstates that went into it. So we can erase the pink microstates. So be sure to, in each box, to erase one and only one of the tick marks. So we're being sure to erase the pink tick marks. So they were quite clear which ones should be erased and which ones should remain. After having derived the first term symbol, we continue the process. We notice that we can envision a rectangle that goes from minus two to plus two in the m sub l values, and just centered at the m sub s equals zero value. So this is a one by five rectangle, and we notice that there's at least one blue tick mark in each of these small boxes. So this is a legitimate rectangle for our purposes. So we notice that as far as big M sub L goes, big M sub L goes from minus two to plus two. And we would recognize that, especially from the case of small M sub L, that this combination of values corresponds to a big L value of two. Because as we recall, for small L equals two, the small m sub l values that go with that go from minus l to plus l, which would be minus 2 to plus 2. Again, we recall that for the small l case of small l equals 2, we refer to this as a small d orbital. Exactly by analogy, when we have big L equals 2, we refer to this as a capital D. Well, notice that there's a very strong correspondence between the things that we're familiar with for the one electron atomic cases, which are done with small Roman letters, and the uh, polyatomic cases, where we use capital Roman letters. So we notice that we have a D state here. As far as big M sub S goes, the only value that we have is zero. And this corresponds to a case where big S is equal to zero. Recall again that when we're deriving the symbols, we generally don't uh, work with S itself. We usually work with the multiplicity. And the multiplicity is 2S plus 1. So if we substitute a value of big S equals 0 into the formula 2S plus 1, we get a spin multiplicity for this state of one. And we refer to these types of states as singlet states. So therefore, the overall term symbol for this particular state is going to be a singlet D. Again, once we've used up the five microstates that contribute to this particular term symbol, we want to be sure to erase them. These are the blue microstates. And now we notice that we have one and only one microstate remaining. The last of our 15 microstates takes up a rectangle that is a one by one rectangle, but for our purposes, that's perfectly good. We have to make sure that we, since we see only one microstate, that we don't ignore it. This one microstate is still important. The M sub L value in this case is equal to zero, which tells us that the big L value has to equal zero. And we can likewise conclude that this is a big S state. That is the symbol that we use for L value being equal to zero. Again, the M sub S value is equal to zero. So this tells us that the S, the total spin value is equal to zero. One thing I should definitely point out here is there is some conf confusion because this big S here tells us that we have a total orbital angular momentum of zero, whereas the S here is our symbol for the spin angular momentum. So we use the same capital letter, but it means two different things. And again, the, we're interested in the spin multiplicity. 
which is 2s plus 1. So again, in this case, if we substitute s equals 0 into the equation, we get that we have a spin multiplicity of 1, which tells us that we have a singlet state. So this is going to be a singlet s state. So overall, the three term symbols that we were able to derive for this particular P2 situation were singlet S, singlet D, and triplet P. I thank you for your attention. Have a good one.